Hello everyone, I'm Jodi Lynn and welcome to Aging Naturally where we talk about ways to age gracefully and look beautiful for our age. So today we're gonna to be talking about vitamin C and the different types of vitamin Cs that are out there and which vitamin C might be most helpful for you. But before we get started, I am actually gonna be talking to you just a little bit about some changes um, that I'm gonna be doing to my videos and some additional information. So if that's something that you're not interested in knowing more about, <laughs> please go ahead and in the description box below, you can fast forward and you can get right to the vitamin C video. First of all, I just want to say thank you so much for every view as well as all of your positive comments. And I notice that when I'm looking over your comments, that many of you give so much valuable information that I think would be so helpful to this community. So what I want to do at the end of each video is I want to highlight a couple of um, viewer comments, um, information that I think that might be really valuable and helpful to you. And also if I notice a comment question I thought that it would be wonderful for me to also um, just kind of answer that question at the end of the video as well so um, that's what we're gonna be doing from now on so if that's something that you are interested in stick around to the end of the video and you'll see kind of some highlighted comments and maybe I might answer a question or two another thing is that on December 30th I turn the big fabulous 5-0 and um, I am really looking to be my best self. So I'm looking to lose those last 15 pounds, maybe it's 20 pounds after my 24 day traveling that we've been doing around the country that has been so wonderful, but I've definitely put on a few pounds because I don't really watch what I eat when I'm traveling. Anyway, um, so there's some additional weight there too. So I really want to be in my best shape. I've been hanging on to these last 15 pounds for quite some time. So um, I think it's because also like, I just feel like, have you guys ever been, feel that way where you like, I feel okay, like I'm okay where I'm at and not that it's a bad place, but I'm not at my best and I know that I can get better if that makes any sense so um, follow me on Instagram on Instagram stories I'm going to be um, kind of journaling my weigh-ins my befores afters what I'm eating recipes as well as my um, weight loss program and my weight loss workout program that I'm going to be doing throughout this process. So I would love some additional support. So if you're interested in that, please follow me on Instagram stories. I will also be um, filing it under fitness and health on Instagram. If you want to just click on that and get all of them, all of the stories, you can, you can find them there. So I would love some additional support. And if you want to go along with me on this journey, that would be wonderful as well. I'm hoping that this will keep me a little bit more accountable in order to be getting off those last few pounds. So without further ado, let's get into the video. As I'm sure a lot of you already know, vitamin C is an exceptional antioxidant and antioxidants help to fight free radicals. And that's really why we age is all those free radicals, pollutants in the air, UVA damage. They um, break down collagen and elastin, which is why we age. So there are different types of vitamin C's and we're gonna be talking about vitamin C and vitamin C derivatives that can be helpful based on your skin condition. Let's go ahead and first start uh, talking about pure vitamin C, otherwise known as L-ascorbic acid. Um, L-ascorbic acid is really the most researched vitamin C that is out there um, to be the most effective. It is highly active, it is water soluble, um, it helps to diminish the appearance of hyperpigmentation, reduces inflammation, as well as strengthen the skin's barrier and support collagen and elastin production. The problem with L-ascorbic acid is that it doesn't really play well with other ingredients and it can be irritating to some people. So when you're looking for a vitamin C that, that has an L-ascorbic acid, the pH level should be at a 3.5 or lower. So anywhere from 2.5 to 3.5 would be your best bet. And because of that, it can be irritating to the skin. It needs to be at that pH level as well for it to penetrate deeper into the skin to be able to do what it needs to do. So that is why it can be really difficult in finding the, great form the best formulation in order to be at most effective. 
Another con with L-ascorbic acid is that it's not very stable. So it can go bad on you very quickly due to light, um, due to uh, oxygen getting into it. So it again, it's just kind of really finicky and it doesn't really play well with other ingredients. When looking for an L-ascorbic acid vitamin C, there are a couple of things that you wanna keep in mind. The first is you want it to be in a dark bottle. The second is if it's in a pump, that would probably be better because you don't want oxygen get to get to the serum because that is going to make it less effective and it's gonna go bad quickly on you. Um, also, you want it to be at a pH level, like I said, under 3.5. So, well, a lot of companies don't tell us the pH levels. Um, Angie from Hot and Flashy did a wonderful video on some l acids that um, did have the pH level at the right amount and also some that did not. I will link that video down below because I cannot do that video any better. <laughs> and um, if, if you are looking for an l acid with the right pH, I think that that will be very helpful. You also want to ensure that if you're looking for an l acid that it has ferulic acid as well as vitamin E. Those two ingredients paired with the l acid is gonna help the shelf stability which is going to be wonderful and it's going to help that formulation to be able to be more stable. Now let's talk about those vitamin C derivatives because if you're kind of like I really want the benefits of vitamin C however l acid just doesn't work for me it's just too irritating there are some things that you could definitely try. While these derivatives are not as research-based as your um, l ascorbic acid Research is improving in this area and there are many people that do benefit from these derivatives So it is something that you can definitely keep in mind and maybe check out and try out for yourself um, the, first, the first one is sodium ascorbyl phosphate otherwise known as sap and sap um, is again like I said a vitamin C derivative um, that gradually converts itself into a vitamin C due to its enzymatic um, process. One advantage to sap is its long-term stability. You don't need to really worry about its shelf life and about it going bad on you very quickly. Also, sap provides many of the same benefits as l acid in that it diminishes appearance of hyperpigmentation, it reduces inflammation, and supports collagen and elastin production. Another unique thing about sap is its antimicrobial effect. So it can be really helpful and an excellent choice for breakout prone skin or for those of us women that have hormonal acne. This could be something that could be really wonderful to check out as well. Another derivative is the magnesium ascorbyl phosphate. This is another uh, vitamin C derivative that gradually unconverts itself into an active vitamin C. So this uh, vitamin C derivative is very similar to sap. So it's different in that it does not have the antimicrobial effect as what sap does. However, what it does do is it does help inflammation that is associated with inflammatory acne. So this can pair very well with sap. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the last vitamin C derivative, hopefully I say this right, the tetrahexyl decyl ascorbate, otherwise known as TA, and that's what we're gonna be calling it in the rest of this video. There's been a lot of debate on TA as far as it just not being as um, research-based, and there's not as much research, like I said, uh, compared to l acid. However, people are finding that they are really enjoying the benefits of TA, and TA, from the research that I have found, which is minimal, but it is out there that um, it is an oil soluble form of vitamin C, which means that the molecular structure of it is just a little bit easier to penetrate deeper into the skin, which means that if it's can able to get deeper into the skin, then that is where it's going to help with elastin and collagen production. So while it has all of the other benefits of l acid, um, it's just not as um, finicky or particular or fresh or as as, you know difficult to formulate like l ascorbic acid is so um, and what also makes this a really wonderful um, form of vitamin C is that the shelf life is more stable so the stability of the formulation is is better than your l ascorbic acid 
Let's talk about how some ingredients that are not going to pair well with your L-ascorbic acid. So L-ascorbic acid is not going to play really well. It's not going to be a good friend to retinol and the reason being is because of the pH level. So L-ascorbic acid should be anywhere from 3.5 or lower and retinol tends to be at a pH level of 5.5 to 6.0. And so when you pair those two together, the pH levels may interfere with each other, meaning that they may not be very potent. So you're gonna to want to use your L-ascorbic acid probably in the morning and not use it with a retinol and use your retinol tretinoin in the evening. Now, something that you can do if you are interested in getting those same benefits in the morning um, as your uh, you know, L-ascorbic acid with your retinol, you could always pair your L-ascorbic acid with a retinol alternative like Picuchiol, which is something that I do. So I love to use Picuchiol in the morning. Um, there is some evidence that shows that Picuchiol um, is a great ret retinol alternative um, that provides similar benefits as retinol. So you could definitely pair those two together with your L ascorbic acid because Picuchiol plays really well with other ingredients and it's not going to be irritating to the skin. Another thing that you could do is also, um, if you wanted to, um, you know, in the evening you're using your tretinoin or retinol, but you really want some of those same benefits um, as your vitamin C in the evening as well, you could definitely opt for a SAP, MAP, or a TA as they play very well with um, tretinoin or retinol. You're not going to find any problems there. Other ingredients when combined with L-ascorbic acid and may show some irritation are your exfoliating acids such as AHAs, BHAs, um, glycolic acid, salicylic acid, lactic acid. And the reason for that is because of the lower in pH as well. And so both of those combined when applied um, could potentially be more irritating to the skin, could be painful, also could um, increase inflammation. So if you're seeing some irritation in the skin, that is something to keep in mind. Um, not that they don't work well together, it's just that both of them are at lower pHs and it can cause some irritation to the skin. So if, you have so if you have sensitive skin, you might want to rethink that and maybe use your acids with maybe a vitamin C derivative. And, and the last um, ingredient that may not pair very well with um, vitamin Cs in general is benzoyl peroxide. So if you're using benzoyl peroxide because you have it, you know, hormonal acne or you just have acneic skin, um, you're going to want to use your vitamin C at a different time than your benzoyl peroxide. So benzoyl peroxide has been known to destroy bacteria, but how it does that is it destroys bacteria by producing free oxygen radicals and what um, this really conflicts with um, vitamin C's because they are actually neutralizing free radicals. So those are not going to be paired very well and they're not going to be effective. So you're going to want to, um, you know, again, like I said, you're going to want to um, probably use benzoyl peroxide in the evening and your vitamin C's during the day. And there you have it. There is um, all about vitamin C's and which one may be helpful to you um, based on your skin condition. We are now going to go into some comments. I'm going to focus on a um, truth treatment video that I did. A couple of months ago and you guys really provided some really helpful information regarding how it compares to new face and I wanted to forward that information on to you so London WLR says the difference between new face and energy is huge you won't regret buying it energy is superior and cheaper Alicia Savino she says thanks good explanation I got the device maybe five weeks ago I prefer this one to the new face I think new face is greater for younger faces. For mature skin, the truth treatment is the way to go. And then Anne Lindsay one, she says, I use and love all truth treatment products, including the energy. I have a new face, but like the energy so much better. It is easy and quick and the electroderm gel is much lighter and used with biometric mineral mist makes it so much easier to use. So I wanted to forward that information on to you if that is something that you are interested in looking into. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please go ahead and give it a like and please follow me over on Instagram. I'm going to need all of the help that I can get and support in going through this weight loss journey. So subscribe, hit that notification bell so you do not miss my upcoming videos. Until next time.